morning, dear friends, and what a beautiful day it is. And I greet you all, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who has given us this brand new day that we may live and glorify our Lord and Savior and our God who has given us this as a gift. And so let us enjoy. But before we get into the practical uh, life, let us uh, give ourselves a few minutes to listen to God's voice, His word, His gentle and yet living word. And so let us open our hearts and our, uh, our, our minds, let the word of God enter into us. Today's lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 19 verses 41 to 48. I would like to read this passage. 19 verses 41 to 48. As he this is Jesus riding on a donkey and coming into the city of Jerusalem. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. He said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. And they will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. And uh, then he entered the temple area and he began driving out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priest the teachers of the law and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his word. Oh, let us look into this very precious passage in the life and experience of Jesus Christ. What we have here is a weeping Jesus. The tears of Jesus. Every year a particular Sunday is celebrated all over the world among Christians known as Palm Sunday. It is celebrated in memory of Jesus entering into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. And this would be his last visit to the city in his earthly sojourn. As the procession came near the city, he saw the city and he wept over the city. Why did he weep? We all are eager to follow, eager to follow Jesus. What kind of Jesus? We are eager to follow a Jesus, a saving Jesus. A healing Jesus, a providing Jesus, a protecting Jesus, a miracle working Jesus, a feeding Jesus, a cleansing Jesus. Yes, we all are happy to follow such Jesus. But how many will follow a weeping Jesus? And my friends, there are three things to observe in this, in this incident. In these nine verses, we see the compassion of Jesus and the anger of Jesus and thirdly, the courage of Jesus. So let us look into these very, very briefly. First, the compassion of Jesus. He saw the city and wept over it. Because he knew very well the character 
of the people of the city. Their cruelty, their righteousness, self-righteousness, and their prejudice against uh, the, the truth, and their stubbornness, and their pride. He knew all these about the people. He knew what they did to the prophets. He knew very well what they did to John the Baptist. And he also knew what they were going to do to him in a few days' time. Looking over Jerusalem, knowing all these things, he saw the city. What kind of a city? His unjust judgment and his delivery to the Gentiles, and his sufferings, his crucifixion, and his death. He saw it all. Yet, knowing all these things, he pitied Jerusalem. And he wept. The word for weeping in Greek is eklausen, means to burst into tears. It means to weep aloud. And it means uh, sob uncontrollably. And Jesus was literally heartbroken. When he looked at the city and saw the city and its people and their character, he couldn't bear it. We do not know, my friends, dear, or dear friends, true Christianity if we do not feel a deep concern about the souls of unsaved people and they are all around us. Let me repeat this sentence one more time. Jesus was literally heartbroken. There is a lesson for us to learn from the experience of Jesus. What is it? We do not know true Christianity if we do not feel a deep concern and sorrow about the souls of unsaved people around us. And we in India especially, we don't have to travel too far in order to find them. They are all around us every day. But we just see them and we pass them by, never feeling anything within us. My friends, do we ever feel the burden for the souls that we pass by? It should be the concern of every child of God to weep over the souls of those who sin and living in sin. Because the Bible says, I mean, in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Beatitude, where Jesus taught us, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Weep over the sin of others. Today, men have the opportunity to know God's truth, uh, but they refuse to know it. Though it is possible for them to know the truth, you know, Pilate, to Jesus, uh, Jesus told Pilate, I, I stand for the truth. And Pilate asked the question, truth? What is truth? And asking that question, he never waited for an answer. He turned around into some other business. He had an opportunity to hear from the truth itself what truth is. But he refused to know the truth. And he lost his soul. And so, my friends, don't miss any opportunity that you have today, at this time, to know the truth. 
and then live in that truth and walk in the truth. Because if you refuse to know the truth, though it is possible for you to know, you deliberately uh, choose not to know the truth. But then you cannot excuse yourself on the day of reckoning as you stand before this great judge of all. Oh, I didn't know it. Uh, my friend, ignorance is no excuse. And we all are responsible for a degree of knowledge. Then live up to the light that we have. And always remember, Jesus said, I am the truth. And those who follow me shall find and know the truth. Let us endeavor in our lives that we will not be satisfied until we know the truth. And the second thing that we observe from this experience of Jesus is, notice the anger of Jesus. Wow. He was angry at the abuse of the temple. He called the, 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 the temple his father's house. And his father's house is the house of prayer. And it's a house of prayer for all the nations, for all the people. But the religious people have uh, turned this house of prayer into a place of business, profit making, commercial center, selling and retailing is equal to abuse. That's what they were doing. The church is his temple and the individual believer is his temple. And my friends, always remember what Jesus' attitude was towards those who defiled the temple and convert the temple into a business house. Uh, today we see it abundantly around us. Bishops and the leaders selling mission properties, God's houses, to make profit for themselves. Uh, and if uh, uh, the house, the temple is a, is, is a, a, a house of God, and it is a place of uh, close communion and fellowship with God, then the priest should not be making business, but he or they must be praying inside the temple of God. If my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, remember what goes on inside my body, nothing but worship of a holy God. And so remember, how angry Jesus was. He had, uh, he, he, he went there with the lati and he drove them out. That's what the scripture says. And so the third thing that we observe here is the look at the courage of Jesus. It says here, he drove out all who misused the temple. In Romans chapter 9 verse 2 it says, The zeal for God has consumed me. Jesus was like that. And it is about him, the scripture says. The action of Jesus courageously getting in the temple and uh, breaking the, the, the barrier uh, set there by soldiers and policemen of uh, security people around. He broke them all and entered in and in anger. What is that anger? That is called a holy righteous anger. The zeal for the house of God. How much zeal we have for the temple? How much zeal you have 
for your own body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, in which the Spirit lives. How much, how, how, how much zeal you have? And in your zeal, are you trying to keep your body fit for the residence, to be a residence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? And that's what your body meant for. My friends, let us be courageous, no matter what the cost we'll have to pay. And in honor of God, and in respect of God, in the fear of God, let us not allow anything else or anyone else to enter in with a business deal and to defile the temple of God. And that is what is expected of you and me. This is what we can learn. Follow the example of Jesus. We weep. And let that weeping continue for the sins of people around us. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you with thanksgiving for souls which are still living in sin. They are lost. And if we don't feel that burden and pray for such people and look for opportunities to share Jesus with them, Lord, we will be guilty of ignoring the greater need of humanity. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. My friends, this is a great day. The word of the Lord is so wonderful and powerful. And he has spoken to us. Let us give heed and honor God. Amen.